Hello, my name is Andreas Fichtner. I'm professor of seismology at ETH Zurich in Switzerland. Together with the team from Candili Observatory, the Colorado School of Mines, and the Istanbul Municipality, we recently conducted a pilot experiment in Istanbul in order to assess the potential of a new technology called distributed fiber optic sensing for the detailed quantification of earthquake hazard. Such earthquake hazard results from the presence of active faults. Among the numerous faults that surround the Anatolian plate, the western branches of the North Anatolian fault around the Sea of Marmara are the most important for Istanbul. The potential impact of earthquakes is often shown in the form of earthquake hazard maps, like this one. They help engineers to design more resilient buildings and to prepare the public for the event of a large earthquake. Helping to improve these maps is our main long-term goal. Hi, I'm Daniel Bowden, a scientist in the group at ETH Zurich. To understand how this fiber optic sensing technology works, I'll start by going over how earthquakes can be recorded by traditional seismometers. So we have a pretend earthquake here at the red star. As soon as the earthquake starts, the earthquake waves start radiating outwards in circles like ripples in a pond. These waves are continuing to expand outward and so far they haven't yet reached our seismometer, that blue box. As soon as they do reach the seismometer, now we start to see a wiggle. The seismometer is shaken up and down or left, right. And this makes a recording where we can see a record of how strong the shaking was and how quickly the waves propagated to that point. So this is what we would call a seismogram. This is our recording of the ground shaking on this seismometer for this earthquake. Now, to really understand earthquakes, and to study the underground structure in detail, we would need many seismometers, not just the one, but for example, all of these blue boxes in a line. Installing this many seismometers would be difficult to install and maintain, and it would be expensive. Although currently this is what many countries and cities around the world do to understand earthquakes in their region. Alternatively, we can use this new fiber optic sensing cable. So in this case, we have a laser on one end on the left, and this sends pulses of light through the fiber optic cable. Again, we have an earthquake here that has just started when the waves will radiate outward in a circle. As soon as the first waves reach the fiber optic cable, we can see that the cable has been stretched or, or compressed. And we have a recording of that, that location on our set of records. Now, as the waves continue to radiate outwards, they reach different points of the cable to the left and right. And so we see more and more areas light up from these earthquake waves passing by. What we're left with at the end here is a record, in this case, a V-shaped pattern showing all of the wiggles along the whole fiber cable. We have a recording potentially every meter, so thousands of recordings along the thing. And what's neat here is that we can use existing telecom fiber cables. We just have to come in and install this, the fiber optic sensor, and we can already start seeing seismic waves with very high resolution all throughout the city. Hi, my name is Adi Sheikh Suleiman, and I'm a master's student at ETH Zurich in Switzerland. As mentioned by Andreas earlier, our goal is to help improve earthquake hazard maps. This could be done by relying on the advantages of distributed fiber optic sensing, as just highlighted by Daniel. Now, let me tell you about this pilot project and its initial promising results. With the help of Istanbul's municipality, we use the telecommunication fiber optic cable located on the Asian side and along the coast of Marmara Sea. The primary sensing unit, technically known as the integrator unit, was stationed in a park indicated by the yellow pin on the map. The fiber extends outward from the park towards the coast, as can be seen in the color purple. In this setup, the cable spanned a length of 8 kilometers. We started recording the signals on the 3rd of February 2023, lasting for a month. This certainly means that our system was able to record seismic waves resulting from the devastating earthquakes on the 6th of February. In particular, as shown in the figure, we recorded the seismic waves from the 7.8 magnitude Kahraman Marash earthquake. Waves that traveled 
approximately 850 kilometers to our fiber location in Istanbul. They were captured in detail along the 8 kilometer cable. In this video, we showcase the earthquake recording along the cable. The horizontal axis represents time, and the vertical axis represents the distance along the cable. The video starts just before the train of seismic waves arrive at the fiber location. Keep an eye on the strong passing signals that are recorded by the fiber optic system. The earthquake signal arrive almost at the same time along the fiber, since the distance to the earthquake epicenter is quite far. However, some amplitude variations in the recorded signal can be observed at different sensing locations along the cable. We also present the complete record of the Kahraman Marash earthquake along the entire fiber, covering a time window of 450 seconds after the earthquake occurs. At first glance, the recorded is dominated by strong signals arriving later, known as surface waves. The weaker signals arriving earlier are called body waves, which travel inside the Earth interior. We compare our recorded fiber optic signal with the closest traditional seismometer. By extracting the data from a nearest sensing point on the cable, the results to a first approximation are very similar in terms of body and surface wave arrivals. However, the data from the fiber optic system appears to be richer, containing higher frequency information. Now the question remains, what can we do other than recording seismic events? Or a better question, what can we do with the fiber optic recordings? By leveraging the advantages of the system, we can extract detailed image of the mechanical properties of the subsurface. In this pilot project, specifically, we were able to utilize the recorded ambient wave field to obtain an image of a wave speed 150 meters below the fiber. The blue color in the section indicate faster waves, while the slower waves are depicted in red. We are currently working on further progress to enhance the resolution of this image. Estimating ground motion based on the mechanical properties of the underground is crucial for assessing the potential impact of future earthquakes. By understanding the subsurface material properties, we can better estimate the int intensity of the seismic waves. However, it is important to emphasize that we cannot predict earthquakes with this method, but we aim to improve earthquake hazard maps and provide engineers with more detailed information of earthquake engineering. Ultimately, our goal is to enhance public preparedness and contribute to a safer environment in earthquake-prone areas. So far, this pilot experiment has been very successful and the initial results look really promising. And clearly, this motivates us to conduct more extensive fiber optics experiments in the Istanbul area in the coming years. Thank you for watching.